what a day it has been. We've already had one great champion crowned in the grade one Northern Dancer Stakes. Still awaiting final results from our HBPA free bet challenge. I know Steve has got over $6,100. We will keep you posted and we'll get those results to you before the end of the show. We still have one more big race and this the biggest of the day. One of the biggest that we have here in the 2010 season. It is the 14th edition of the Woodbine Mile. Grade one status, $1 million on the line. We've got a great field of 13 that will be going on the E.P. Taylor Turf Course. And the champion here is going to get an automatic buy into the TG Breeders' Cup Mile. As we head back trackside and rejoin Jim Bannon and Todd Shruff, and maybe if we could just focus in on the success of past mile champions into the TBG Breeders' Cup Mile. It really does translate. I, you win this race, it's a career accomplishment, but now you get to go to an even bigger stage in the TVG Breeders' Cup Mile. And looking at previous winners of this race, you're almost guaranteed to have a big run on that day. And you don't have to be a winner in this race. You just sort of have to be competitive in this race, and that will carry you on, especially if you can sit back and program it well enough that you peak here and peak again uh, when you get to the Breeders' Cup at Churchill Downs. So a lot of uh, people just come for the one race, the one shot, the big purse, but others have a far-reaching plan. Taking a look at the tote board here, a lot of money has come for Famous Name at 6 to 1 in the morning line, down to 9 to 5. Maybe that's a derivative of what took place back in the Northern Dancer with Redwood making his first start in North America and winning. A lot of respect for Famous Name, who makes his first start. Field the 13. I thought it was a tough race to narrow down. Where do you find yourself with contenders in here? Well, why don't we take a moment here and meet the field uh, for the Woodbine Mile. And we do have some exceptional individuals uh, in this particular event. And here is Court Vision. Now, this horse wins infrequently, but when he does score, it's usually at the highest level. And there's a good reason for that. He keeps only the best company. And we'll see how he does. Uh, he's been moving from turf course to turf course. And this is the fifth different one he'll be seeing this season. And so we'll wish him good luck in this particular event. What about the big shipper from California, the usual QT? Well, he's got eight victories on the turf, and he won the grade one Eddie Reed, which is a big race in California. That made him the best in his division. They sort of went outside their best sights last time and tried the synthetic surface, and it didn't work. So we'll see how he does getting back to turf. And this is Victor's cry. I think he shocked just about everyone except his confident trainer, Owen Hardy, when he rallied so superbly to win the grade one Shoemaker Mile. Now that was at Hollywood Park. That was 21 to 1. He's a big late kicker, and that should be ideal for this particular turf course. we got Grand Adventure to take a look at. Now this horse keeps starting over. He started over early in his career, but he went flat at the Breeders' Cup. He started over last year, but fatigued in this race. But it won't take much to get back to the top today because he's in great form this year. Smoky Fire is one of the local horses as well, and he's got some high profile siblings, but he's been adding to the family tree himself. He's got obvious potential. It was there last autumn. It's been there so far this season. And he is a horse that tends to bring his A game almost every time. And he goes for a trainer that won this race back in 2001 with numerous times in that Citatar. We should give uh, your contenders to the leader of the HBPA contest. He can play a triactor <laughs> box for us. Everywhere you look, there's value to be found in this field. But that's the way it should be. The Woodbine Mile is one of the premier grade one races going a mile on the grass in North America. It should be tough. Even horses like Straight Story, who's had a great campaign this year and a solid career. He sits up on the board right now at 18 to 1. He is a New York bred who's not afraid to run an open company. Yeah, he, he's done that before, but uh, he got back to New York at Saratoga last time and he ran in a restricted race and he was able to uh, win it. And uh, he even had a stumbling start in that race and was still good enough. Now here's a very nice horse coming off a nice win. And he's a big price. Yeah, court vision. A lot of this has to do with the fact that he always makes it so close. I think the pace scenario is perfect for him today. But if he's going to get up, it's always going to be in the shadow of the wire. He's not going to overwhelm his competition. He's also got to get a little bit lucky. And then there's Robbie Alvarado coming back from an end but he is here to ride court vision currently from a seven to two morning line up at six to one this is a horse who won the shadwell turf mile last fall at keeneland many expected coming into this year he'd be one of the best milers in america it hasn't really panned out that way you have to like a horse that's made 13 consecutive starts 
in grade one company. That tells you that he has been facing good horses. And here's the local horse, and this is Grand Adventure. And as I said, his uh, life story is one of starting over. And this is his third comeback, and he's won a couple of stake races. But I thought they ran him at a distance that was too far, just beyond his optimum last time. And he got tired, and he was beaten by his stablemate. So they freshened him. They've shortened him in distance. He's worked very well coming into the race. But he's got the outside post, and how can you get to that pristine grass on the inside when you're starting from 13? I gotta believe the best he can hope for is a tracking position, maybe sit in the three or four path, but that might be good enough. He's as good as any point in his career. Grand Adventure, a live chance here at 10 to 1. Also at 10 to 1 is Victor's Cry. The freshening is the key. He's been off since July 24th. The longer the layoff, the better he seems to be. He won the Shoemaker Mile at Hollywood Park, which is a two-turn mile, but it was a sensational time in 132 and 4. He's definitely helped out with this turf course being labeled firm now, but I look at his effort back in February of this year at Santa Anita where he won down the hill off a similar layoff. He ran a sensational time and those are similar races. They're one turn. I think he's going to love the layout here on the EP Taylor turf course. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll go back to Woodbine in a few moments, but right now it's time to move forward. Race 11 on the card from Monmouth Park. We have a three to five favorite. These are state breads that have never won two races other than the big favorite is number six, Arctic Air, who is dropping into this allowance race off a fourth place effort when showing the way in a stakes, the Colts Neck, a $100,000 stake in the mud. So obviously getting some class relief here. Farragut's Follies racing for the $17,500 tag. The number two horse is your clear-cut second choice in the nine. Our Royal Affair for Bruce Levine is the third choice as they go into the game. The eight, just a line, a big uh, price at 33 to one moving in. And Our Royal Affair would be the last one into the outside. They're just about set. Good luck and enjoy the 11th from Monmouth. And then it's straight back to, it's to the inside crowded house. The horse that almost stole this year's Pacific Classic and almost 13 to 1. He sure fired a big shot in there, and Joel Rosario takes the trip up to Canada to take over. You heard Todd Trupp making the strong case for Victor's cry. He's got a good point. This contender loves the mile, runs very well off the layoff for Owen Hardy, and Corey Nakatani is hungry for the money. Here is Ziff Zaff, a son of War Chan, who certainly obviously loved a mile on the turf. And this guy comes in for Jimmy Toner at a big number. Court vision. Robbie Alvarado, good to see him back after. Off the injury, he's going to run here for Rich Dutro Jr. in Court Vision at 6-1. to one. Looks to be sitting just off of it and try to make a move with that strong turn of foot. A very classy New York bred straight story in the colors of Richard Santulli. has won three of his last four races, but he obviously steps up in a big way today. Straight story, Smoky Fire, signature bred, should all be in the same pack early on. Smoky Fire, that sprinter stretching out, is ultra dangerous on the turf course today. And Signature Red was soundly defeated, but he was the favorite when they met last time in the Play King. So he is going to try to turn the tables. Moving forward, here is the Hall of Famer Michael Earl Smith aboard a tour at 47 to 1. He has a nice turn of foot going a mile. He is seriously outclassed, but if the pace scenario sets up, he could be in the mix late. Riviera Cocktail is 22 to 1 on the board right now. Son of Giants Causeway has been freshened since an effort in the Wicker at Del Mar. Woodbourne is the 10 at 47 to 1. Chantel Sutherland has a contender that should be up close, doesn't have the speed to control, but could be in the first flight and could beat your deep closers to the punch. The usual QT loves the turf. He's back where he belongs on the grass. He's won 8 of 10 on turf. He's going to have to try to rebound, however, from a disappointing effort in the Pacific Classic. Here's some serious class. Famous name is going to be the one to beat here at 5-2. to two. Has been coming out of some outstanding races, including the Irish Championship Stakes, running behind twice over, and Rip Van Winkle. And there's Grand Adventure, and we'll check in on the guys having a Grand Adventure in Toronto right now. Who's the only jockey in this race that has tasted victory in this stake as he won back in 2001 with numerous times for trainer Sid Attard. He's looking to win his second Woodbine Mile. And Patrick Husband's year in and year out the leading jockey here at Woodbine. So naturally, he walks around with a little bit of swagger. And for more on this cool jock from Barbados, here's a nice little feature on Patrick. It's one time I started riding horses. I was always fighting for championships. The 2008... Sovereign Award Outstanding Jockey is Patrick Husband. As I say, he's 16. I've, I always want to be a champion. And I always try to find ways, try to find ways to be dominant. Patrick Husband's an utterly cool. Husband's wins his third on the afternoon. Some might call him cocky. Some might call him confident. Whatever Husband's is, it works for him, and business is good. Every athlete 
you all know that term called cockiness in North America. You know what I mean? And every athlete have, have that in them. Any, sorry, any top athlete have that in them. Somebody asked me a question the idea. I didn't even know the answer, you know. Good luck. How comes every year you are so consistent? How comes every year you are so consistent, you know? Every, nearly every year, a different guy challenges you in the championship. Then the next year, you don't see that guy. What are you doing different? X, Y, and Z. I said, you know what? I can answer that question when I retire. <laughs> Can't let everything out the bag, you know what I'm saying? I look at this very, when you're not doing no good, nobody don't care nothing about you. Nobody don't have nothing to say about you. When you are on top, People always have things to say about you, so, you know, just come and do your job and go home. You know, I always on the favorites at Woodbury, all the, all the public always making me favorite. I have no beef, no boy, the jockey room. I look at this way, you go here to do your job, I go there to do my job, and the gates fly, you know. I'm not saying everybody pick on me, but, you know, I always be the, the target, but one of the biggest things is, is, is help me. I always behind. So nobody, know, nobody don't know where he is, but by the part of the <laughs> he's becoming, right? The wild song, Deekers, elusive Terra, Poof 2, Poof 2's flying on in, Poof 2 from out of the cloud to win it. I'm lucky, I'm probably the only guy, in, only guy probably in the world that's get paid for something he love. I mean, I love horse races so bad, right, that I like fun, I like being on a horses, in the fall, I don't sleep. I just want to win the championship. I, I just want another stop as a war. Anybody who come and stay at my house is like, Patrick, you're not gonna sleep. No, not the last, the last two months. I just want to get on a horse. Just want to get on a horse. So there is the man with the swagger, and he'd add a little bit more swagger to his step. If he gets a victory here aboard number 13, Grand Adventure right now is at odds of 8 to 1. We're closing in on post time, just under two minutes away from the Woodbine Mile. So let's head back to the owner's box, rejoin Simon Bray, who's with Jim Cassidy. Yeah, for a quick thought from Jim Cassidy, anxious moments, uh, seconds before grade one, Jim. But how's this horse shipped, and what about the ground condition for him? I know that was a concern earlier in the week. Well, it was, and I'm not sure about the ground, so I left it up to David, uh, to Victor, because there's different spots that are soft. I just asked him not to move too early. Well, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. It's Jim Cassidy, back to you, Chad. Thank you, Simon, and they're loading into the gate. It's the 14th edition of the $1 million Woodbine Mile Grade 1 status, a great field of 13. Best of luck to everybody competing in this year's edition. Let's go upstairs again and rejoin the man that's going to call the action, Dan Loisel. Just going to load the outside horses for the people, Chad. Waiting on the usual QT. There we go. And to the outside, a famous name and grand adventure, the usual QT. A tad reluctant there. With the help of the assistant starters, is in. There's famous name and Pat Smullen. And to the outside, grand adventure. One more to go. Signature red. They're at the post. They're off in the Woodbine Mile, and Woodbourne a broke running as did Straight Story, who goes straight to the front. And it's Straight Story and Rajiv Mara to take the early lead. Woodbourne in a second position, zip zap down to the inside, third. Signature red is fourth, and Grand Adventure is fifth. Victor's Cry is sixth, and Smoky Fire is seventh. In between horses, famous name is in eighth position. The usual QT back in ninth, but just three lengths off the lead. Then we have a crowded house who's next to the hedge, followed by O'Tour. Then a court division and Riviera cocktail is last of 13 as they run into the turn. And it's Zip Zaff and Julian Laparu as they head into the turn. Grand adventure tracking closely in second. Smoky Fire is third. Straight stories back in fourth now. Woodburn in amongst horses, fifth and two and a half lengths off the lead. Then toward the inside is a victor's cry, signature red. The usual QT travels well outside of horses, just three lengths off the lead. And they come over to the top of the stretch, Grand Adventure. And on the inside, Zip Zaff, Woodburn's in there with a big shot. Straight stories right there. And the usual QT swings to the far outside. They're in the stretch now. They ran three quarters in one ten and one. And it is Bedlam in the mile at the eighth. 
Quarles. The usual QT comes on and takes the lead. Here comes Court Vision, the usual QT. Court Vision, Whitburn, zips out to the inside. Court Vision and Robbie Alvarado. Court Vision, it's his day to day. Court Vision and Robbie Alvarado win the Woodbine mile of the usual QT and a three horse show photo. Court Vision and Robbie Alvarado for Dick Dutrow at seven to one, Chad. What a thrilling addition of the Woodbine Mile, 14th in the book, 7-1 to shot court vision, and he has now stamped himself a spot in the starting gate for the TBG Breeders' Cup as he takes the 2010 Woodbine Mile under Robbie Alvarado, who this is his first mount back after an injury that had sidelined him for a while back, no rust. He must have shaken that off because he had the best horse today for Richard Dutro Jr., who's come close on two occasions here in past here. Court Vision, a great champion at seven to one. Let's go get more as we join Simon Bray. Yeah, we're just reliving the moment here. Rick Dutro to my right, Mike Ivorone in the middle, who heads up IEAH. What a record you've got in this race. You were second with Kip Deville, went on to win the Breeders' Cup mile. This was a great performance from a horse who's always there or thereabouts, but finally gets another big win. Well, I kind of felt that this race was not going to work out for us. I mean, we've come here now. This is the fourth different time we came here once. We were one to two, but no luck. And we figured, you know, this time we're going to come in, hope for the best, and see what happens. And I thought we were in a little bit of trouble in the stretch. I couldn't find him. And all of a sudden, Rick started beating the heck out of me. And I knew we were alive. <laughs> Rick, great training job. You pointed this horse specifically for this race. Probably a little too far last time. This one turn mile is perfect. I think the weather's got a lot to do with his game, too. This is a nice, cool day. Last time we ran up Belmont, it was very hot. We're not, that's why we try to back off him during the summertime. He just seems to be, this is his game today. He, he showed up. And that bodes well for the Breeders' Cup, where I assume he is going, correct? You assume that right, babe. <laughs> <laughs> great win for you guys, and a great win for Robbie Alvarado coming off that injury. He's standing by with Renee. Renee? Robbie, I asked you before you went into the gate about how it felt to get back on your first horse yesterday at Turfway. You said, you said it felt pretty good. You weren't quite as winded, but this would make you feel even better, wouldn't it? Yes, it did. He ran an awful nice race today. Corvin, that's a cool horse to ride. He's an easy horse. We both come off a uh, long layoff today, and it worked out well for us. He was fresh. You were fresh. Maybe tell us about your strategy going into the race, because this was indeed a, a very competitive field of, of milers. Well, basically, I just wanted to let him sell in early. I know he's been off a while, but he's been training for in Saratoga this summer, so I figured I can give him a good trip. He'll, he's going to come home, and he did. Was the ground any concern to you? We had a lot of rain, and it dried up, and it, and it went from good to firm. Were you, were you concerned at all about how it was going to come up? Oh, not really. He runs over a lot of different surfaces, and he's, he's professional about them all, so I figured I just was basically get out, stay out of his way, give him a good trip, and he did. He ran well. I mean, Betro did a great job getting ready for today. It's good to see you back in the tack and good to see you back in the winter circle, Robbie. Thanks, appreciate it. Okay, Robbie Alvarado getting the win in the Woodbine Mile. Chad? Thanks, Renee. And Court Vision takes the 2010 Woodbine Mile. We'll take another quick break here on our live coverage. When we come back, we'll get some post-race reaction to wrap everything up from this year's edition. Three months free with TV. Get it done, Victor. Come on, Victor. Get it done, Victor. Come on, Victor. Come on, Victor. Come on, Victor. Wherever you at. Come on, Victor. Come on, get it. There's trainer Jim Cassidy cheering on his charge, the 11, the usual QT, who eventually will finish second to Court Vision, who is being led into the stakes winner's circle. Vic Espinoza aboard the usual QT. He's standing by with Sandy Hawley. Thanks a lot, Chad. Uh, Victor, you're very familiar with this guy, and boy, he looks like he gives you 110% every time, man. Yeah, he does. I mean, he ran big today. He tries hard as he can, and um, I mean, he was a good race for him. All right, uh, looked like a cavalry charge at the head of the stretch. How was your trip out there? I got a very good trip, and I'd be able to relax them behind the horses and then, you know, wait and to the last, you know, turn it like down the, down the, down the lane. And I swing to the outside, and, you know, he, he ran his race. Near the end, did you hear uh, court vision coming? <laughs> I know it was somebody was coming in behind me, but I don't know who it was, you know, and, and, and I was, the wire was a little bit farther and farther. So, uh, you know, it is one of those things that they um, come all the way here, and at least he ran big. Well, Victor, you got a piece of it. Uh, great job out there, and look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go back to Chad. Thank you, Sandy. And as we get a close-up look again of the winner, number four, Court Vision.